Steve is hoping to collect samples of everything a fussy eats in a day. A fussy, where have you gone? A mouthful here and a mouthful there. That's what it's all about, being a goat. There's the fruit, leaves, dried leaves. There's another sort of woody, sort of herby-looking plant. It all aids the digestive process. When Steve downloads the GPS data, he'll be able to see just how far the goats have to go to get a square meal. You're doing a good job. Hmm? You're doing a good job? Meh. Meh. Yeah, good. Good lad. Come on, then. Come on. Yeah, come on. Come on, come on. I say, you tell them what yes, to do. Yes, come on. <laughs> Hiya. 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 Who teaches you to dance? It's very cool. That same evening, he gets the results of the goat test. I'm just downloading the data for that now. It's quite interesting, actually. What we've got on the x-axis is time moving along here. And then this uh, y-axis here is her speed. Now, zero is about here. So when she's sort of at this point along this line here, she's actually stood still. I mean, you can just see it keeps moving, stopping, moving, stopping, moving, stopping. In just an hour, a fussy stopped 30 times, and over the course of the day, the little goat walked a staggering 12 kilometres as she sought out enough food to survive. What this really highlights is that this ability of the goat to, to seek out the good food. Um, it, it's not just basically wandering up to one bush and just munching away on that until everything's gone. Quite often we would see the goats today, uh, they'd go up, they'd sniff at something and they wouldn't eat it at all. And you think, you know, that can't be a, a good survival trait if it's turning its nose up at what looks to us as good food. But obviously it can detect that, you know, it's not quite as good as the next bush, um, which means that they get the absolute best out of what's available. This is why the Afar relies so much on their goat herds. The goat's ability to turn sparse bush into walking protein is largely what keeps the people here alive. The next day, on the dusty road to the earthquake fissure, Dougal's venture hits a snag. Not content with just going to the site of the earthquake, Dougal's brought along over 100 kilos of state-of-the-art equipment to map the earthquake fissure in 3D. But this is as far as the cars can go, and there aren't enough camels to take all the kit. As you can see, it's still pretty pretty horrendous dusty place we've only got half the camels we uh, we asked for uh, the other half are somewhere over in the dust over there so I guess we're gonna load most of the heavy gear here and hopefully the other camels will come and uh, pick up the rest of the gear we've only got basically a day and a half up there um, you know, to make sure the whole system works so we'll push on ahead and hopefully we can we can catch up a little bit of time and hopefully the Sun will be uh, be a bit kind to us today <laughs> fat chance <laughs> They have no choice but to load as much of the kit onto the camels as they can and set off walking across the lava fields. What should be a half day's trek as a camel train turns into a day-long hike with no guarantee they'll have enough gear at the other end to do the 3D scan. Six a.m. the next day, and they're still a kilometre from the earthquake fissure. Some camels have arrived, but the rest could be anywhere. We've got basically one day of sunlight left. We've got uh, the fissure to do, and that's it. We can't fail. This is it. Today is one day and one day only. But now there's another obstacle. The last kilometre between them and their goal is studded with volcanic vents spewing deadly sulphur dioxide gas like a chemical minefield, which they have no way of avoiding. So, carrying gas safety monitors, Dougal and the team set off on the final leg of their journey. Walking in with your detector, I feel almost like a, a canary heading into, uh, into a coal mine. Hopefully I won't be a dead canary. What Dougal doesn't know is that the rest of his vital mapping kit has finally left base camp and is on its way. Though there's no guarantee it will arrive in time to use it before it gets dark. 
However, after a highly stressful and demanding three-day journey, Dougal is about to get his first sight of the Dabahu earthquake fissure. Well, we've still got some fairly low readings, which is good, but we've got to be close. I mean, just uh... keep monitoring it. <laughs> oh, 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 you oh are God. kidding me. Dougal. Absolutely yeah. awesome. I was expecting a small crack in the ground. Oh, my lord, this is fantastic. It's up there in the uh, Hall of Geological Fame, I think. My lord. Before the eruption, locals recall how the ground swelled until it finally burst open in a massive explosion throwing thousands of tons of ash and rock across a vast area, swallowing their camels and goats. This vast crack in the earth is all that was left behind. To think this has happened, excuse me, I'm out of breath actually with excitement at this stage. To think this happened overnight, this is the stuff of Hollywood. When you're a kid and you see those movies of, of streets breaking apart, this would have just opened up and ejected a whole heap of magma. This is just phenomenal. I really hope we can get some really good stuff out of this because having got here now, I wish we could stay three, four days, maybe even a week. This is just geologic heaven. Oh, this is fantastic. There are only a few hours of daylight left for Dougal to make his scan, but at least all the kit has now finally arrived. This unit here fires um, millions and millions of laser points in a 360 direction to build up a complete 3D picture of the landscape around it. The final thing we need to do is to fit a camera to the top and what we'll do is we'll take high resolution digital photographs and the computer software will then be able to merge the picture with the scan and that's when things get really exciting. The reason the 3D scan is so important is that it creates a snapshot of the exact state of the fissure at the moment. Because if, as Dougal suspects, the Earth's crust is breaking apart here, measuring it now will help geologists understand how fast that process is moving. So to work out if the fissure is getting deeper, wider or longer, a 3D model is needed, and that's what Dougal hopes to make. The only problem is he'll have to get himself and his laser scanner 60 metres down there before it gets dark. And there are no stairs. I'm going to put a line. And it's like a cable car if you like going across a cable. And that cable will control from here. OK, so we'll release the tension and that cable will slacken. 